Hi, I am Kajer on two wheels and today I am at Rayomoto to test drive the Yamaha Versus 650. So this is Kawasaki's proposal for the mid-range adventure bikes. And this looks big, it's a big fat machine. It looks bigger than the 600 to be honest. Now this one's loaded with extras. This is the test drive machine, as you can see, it says test drive. Um, but they loaded it with extras to show customers how this can look. That's disturbing. How this can, how a bike fully kitted out like this works. So let's do a quick front to back and show you the extras along the way. So you've got your road going uh, rims, 16, uh, 17 inch, 120, 160 at the rear, uh, dual headlamps, I much prefer these instead of a single headlamp. You got your crash bars, this is extra. You got your extra lamps, this is extra. Obviously you've got your hand guards, which is an extra. And this big windscreen is also an extra because the original one is much, much shorter. And this silly system of opening this up and going up and down, while works, well, it forces you to get off the bike so you can so you can actually uh, change this, which is a bit, well, silly to be honest. The Suzuki system is way better, Yamaha system is slightly better. This is the worst of the three, but well, it works. <laughs> it actually works. Um, it's got quite a big range of adjustment too. So moving backwards, you've got your 650 engine with its on screen, the power. Um, you've got your rear suspension, which is um, stuck here side on the side with this knob to adjust the preload, which is awesome. You can even see it move. <laughs> This should be on all bikes. It's much better than that crank thing where you need a tool to do it. Okay, a machine swing arm instead of just a cheap bar. The exhaust is tucked under here, which is great. This one also has the side panniers, which I don't have at the moment. I didn't. I, I asked for them to not put it up because the bike big be becomes too big, and I might want to filter with it. Um, which the panniers are these 39 liters, I think. And it's got the top box with the uh, backrest for the pillion. Other than that, stock bike, brand new too. Let's see the instrument cluster real quick. Oh, the clutch lever is adjustable and the brake lever is adjustable. Pretty cool. And the instruments, it, it, this dash actually looks pretty good. I like it quite a lot. And it's got the basics, fuel, gear indicator, and the onboard computer with autometer range and fuel consumption and that's about it simple but effective this works very well let's just turn it on so you can hear how a euro 4 engine should sound yamaha i'm talking to you seriously how hard would it be to make the other bike sound like this come on guys work with me okay well let's see how this goes so let's see how this new 2018 versus 650 goes. I've been riding it for a little bit and I can tell you one thing. Gentlemen, this is how you make a Euro 4 exhaust sound. Just listen to this. is a stock Euro 4 exhaust. It sounds absolutely lovely. I've heard aftermarket exhausts that don't sound this good. The volume is low but the note is just mm, just right. So I really wanted to do these turns fast not behind a bloody mini clubman. What the hell is the matter with these cars? Let's make a small car on the outside and try to make it big then it's no longer a small car it's a big small car it's yeah gerk it's like making an adventure bike out of an r6 just doesn't quite make sense yeah whatever let's go for overtakes oh there's one car coming but i have time see so engine wise engine wise 
I have to compare this one because this is its comp competition with the Tracer and the V-Strom. And engine-wise, well, right now this feels the worst of the three. This bike, however, is only 300 kilometers old, so the engine's still kind of uh, stiff. But it just doesn't feel as spiffy when you punch the throttle as the V-Strom. And definitely not as the Tracer, but the Tracer... Well, the Tracer's on a league of its own. This doesn't feel slow, but it's not quite as fun as the Tracer. Actually, not as fun as the Tracer, period. And not quite as much as the V-Strom. To the V-Strom, the difference is there, but it's not that big. And it's probably due to probably extra weight on this one. I'm pretty sure this weight is heavier and due to some newness to the engine however the engine for some odd reason is even smoother than the v-strom that that accounts in part for the feel of uh, being slower suspension wise easily on par with the v-strom if not even better but the suspension is more on roady than off-roady so i feel these horrible bumps a lot more but it feels great on the road so far let's see on the test track how it goes see on these I'm accelerating fully and the rear wheel does not leave the ground not for a second it doesn't just doesn't stop gripping it's not all roses though the tires are some great Dunlop Sport Max however in the rain and i rode this first in the rain i wasn't mega impressed maybe it's me being used to the pilot road fours where i can just ride as if i was in the dry but on these tires when i rode in the wet uh, paint and um, storm drains which are metal made the front slide quite a lot more than i was expecting so i'm not sure if that's just a normal rain tire and i'm just spoiled for the great rain tire the pilot road 4 is but well there it is I'm going so to the good news it is dry the bad news there's a lot of traffic so let's see three two one go we're going to go the whole way behind this windscreen i hope it doesn't distort your vision too much Feels very planted in the turns. That's a great feel in the in the bendies. Even for such a tall bike, because it is a very tall bike. Should really be in second gear, but what the heck. Yeah, that should have been second gear. Let's shift down. Do, does this have a slippy clutch? It feels like it. <laughs> this is a great twisty machine. This feels so good here. It's unbelievable. Wow. This is an awesome machine here. Awesome. I came here with a full expectation of this being... Eh, because it is a very, very tall bike. And this isn't. Eh, this is awesome. On such a big bike, what a great suspension setup. Well, it is a show us inverted front fork and wow. I would really love to have this suspension on my Tracer and it would be the perfect mid-range bike. 
Jeesh! <laughs> oh, wow, we! I am very, very excited now. Of course, this bump I just did was a bit harsher. But that's not the way you go, you... Uh, oh well, the signs do say, but it's no longer... Okay, whatever. Woo-wee! <laughs> what a bloody machine! This is great! Okay, granted, the engine is a tracer engine. But it is smooth, so you can accelerate out of turns without much of an issue. Oh, wow! I was expecting a good suspension setup from what I've already ridden and from looking at it, Showa inverted forks, big fat forks, adjustable, blah blah blah, I was not expecting it to be literally on rails the whole time and be agile at the same time. This is, this is new ground here, this is easily, I don't know, whatever, what other bike has had this performance I just loved. Um, Oddly enough, the Benelli, <laughs> which is very odd, but it does have very good suspension. But no, not, not the Benelli. The Benelli wasn't in this. Um, oh, the RC390. The RC390 had a lot of this feel, but it, that is a sport bike. <laughs> it's, it's unbelievable. I love this one. I just love this one. I'm just resetting to do the Portuguese part of this. And this bike just makes me go so fast I might not survive this climb again <laughs> what a no lovely 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 the first time I tried this one I was a bit meh yeah it's a cool bike but it didn't really tick any boxes I was tired the route wasn't fantastic and I think the suspension setup was all funky but this one this is the out-of-the-box settings, except for preload, which was at an absolute minimum and I raised a little bit. And it's just bleeding amazing. I think this was much improved from the last version. At least it feels better, even in town, it just feels better. It is stiffer than the V-Strom. It is a lot more on-roady than the V-Strom. Easily, it, it feels better on the road. Then the V-Strom, slightly less engine, the V-Strom feels more off-roady, more in-between. This is more in-between leaning to the road-going machine. Am I making myself even remotely clear? Maybe not. But yeah, this is th that in-between, but slightly more towards road. If you stick some knobby tires on this one, and you soften the suspension, that's why the adjustable is here, you will be able to do some off-road, not as much as the V-Strom, I think. Let's try that thing I took the V-Strom to. Ramemoto, this is your bike, so please don't complain too much. No, it should be okay. Um, can I go? I can. And this feels big. This bike feels... That's why I thought this was going to be meh. Because behind this bike, you feel you're drive, you're riding a one-liter bike. It's that big. It, it it really has that big adventure bike feel. This ginormous windscreen, which I do not like, by the way, and you guys can see why I don't like it. The top of it is right at my eye level, and I am 1.74 meters tall. This is not a stock one, as I said. This is an accessory, and I don't like it this tall because. Oh, come on! Seriously? 30 kph? I can run this fast! Move it! For fuck's sake. So, as I was saying, now that we're stopped... Um, I lost my way. What was I talking about? Oh, the windscreen. This has a lot of distortion here because it's where it bends the most. And it's right at my eye level. So, I get double images as my head goes through this. And you're probably getting the same thing from the camera which sits at a slightly lower angle. So let me see what you guys can see. Yeah, you can see through the windscreen. What I see is this, like this, which is, well, annoying, right? So I wouldn't get this tall windscreen, to be honest. But Twitch is on. Ramamoto decided to put on this windscreen and the top case and the side cases and the crash bars to give it, to give customers that look at how this can look feel 
Another thing I quite enjoy about this bike is that it's since it feels bigger it doesn't feel odd with panniers on it yeah this is a lot stiffer than the v-strom it still works but it's more that yeah it will, it will work fine the tracer is more like do i have to <laughs> this one is yeah with a bit of care i can do it okay these big logs weren't in the plan why not i can go <laughs> it's a pooch Hey, Pooch, you scared me half to death. Wow. <laughs> yeah, that scared me, you stupid Pooch. Because his growling suddenly sounded like a bike uh, locking a wheel on the dirt. And I, th I thought, whoa, there's an off-road machine here. I didn't hear it. I'm about to crash. <laughs> Come on, Pooch. Come on. Now let's go standing up. Standing up, oddly enough, it's better than the V-Storm 650. You're still leaned over a little bit, but not quite as much, more comfortable. The tank is also wider, so it's easier to grab your knees to it. And yeah, this with slight, slight suspension adjustments will work fine off-roading. Make the damper softer or make the preload lower and tension lower so the springs are softer that's the adjustments you have here and you'll have a much better off-road machine so this is kinda like the V-Strom very close to the V-Strom but slightly more towards road but off-road it's not really no it's a bit but it's not really that much worse but I think it is miles better on the road. For the twisties, it is better than my Tracer. I love it. It just doesn't have the engine. The Tracer just take the fun you don't have in the corners because the bike isn't as on rails as this one. You get it by coming out of the corners with one wheel up and your heart racing because I really thought I was going to hit that tree. That's the Tracer way. This is the... There is no one who can do this corner faster than I do. <laughs> That's th this bike's way. Which is a bit odd because I always thought Kawasaki would do a Tracer-like bike and not a more uh, cerebral, more Honda-like bike, which is great on paper. It, it's really fast on paper, but then just lacks that pizzazz. This one has that pizzazz, but the Yamaha has that pizzazz. This is just pizzazz. The Vistrom is even slightly less, but very good. Very, very capable machine. Very, very capable machine. I'm very impressed. So, one, one last ride. I am most definitely impressed at just how good this feels on these bendy roads. It's just awesome. Um, something that I forgot to mention, the seat is awesome. The whole bike feels big. It feels like you're on a 1000 liter bike. You're not, but it feels like it. It's just the handlebars are wide. Your arms are in a very relaxed position. I'm not on the V-Storm. I was reaching out slightly and slightly bent forward. Like I was, my back was straight, but I was like this, slightly. So it felt, almost like a naked bike on this one this is a pure adventure adventure bike uh, riding position i was sorry i was just evaluating if sh i should overtake or not i could have but i shouldn't have no i can i shouldn't but i can and i did uh, <laughs> but yeah you're on a very relaxed very straight up position on a very very comfy seat this is easily more comfortable than my comfort seat on the tracer and so i get the feeling this was designed to be a great long long touring machine yeah i would be happy to make a huge tour on this to be honest it's not a tiresome bike the tracer can be a tiresome bike because of the stiffer suspension and you're jolting a bit everywhere um and it's the accelerator requires some concentration so you don't get jolted everywhere 
but it is not a tiresome bike it's not it's more tiresome than this one but this one this one i can feel i could just take it and ride just forever and never be tired it's it's it is that good i also like this dash better than the v-strom i think it's much prettier the v-strom with that well outdated uh asymmetrical look i don't quite like it yeah it's got all of the gizmos it's got everything it's got more info than this but uh, it's just i don't like that dash it just looks well not appealing this one looks very nice and come a turn i can do this if i want to i just didn't do this faster because this road is full of little patches and i have no idea on the grip i do on the road where i know what the grip is here i'm not 100 percent comfortable about the grip and it's been raining so it's a green track mm, not my bike <laughs> that's that's what i that's what crosses through my mind as i put my knee out every time not my bike just flashes like this Zush, not my bike <laughs> so i always always do it a bit slower than i would like to and on my bike what flashes through my mind left to right is you can't afford a crash <laughs> you can't afford a crash and it just flashes and i slow down also it's not like you're gonna get hurt it's more like you can't afford the crash so yeah the v-storm 650 i'm not sure what improvements were made but i have enjoyed this 1000 percent better than the old one i think you can you noticed I, I don't know i just i much 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 prefer this one i have no idea what they did to the bike i think they did nothing it was just i was tired on the last test drive and the suspension was all screwed up and this one's tuned just perfectly it has to be that because i can't believe they improved this by the bike this massively this fast can't be done there's a huge hole here <laughs> which leads literally nowhere it's like it's this whole beak is just empty space look at that <laughs> there's nothing there you could have put say you could have put some electronics there that would be a cool place to put them there's a big gap well you can put some accessories there if you want like your um vivir your uh, electronic toll thingy there behind that plastic for example or whatever make a little pocket there to put your wallet or <laughs> yeah that's a big hole um so what what else let's stop gushing all uh, all about this bike let's start th saying things okay bad thing this rear but this is on this unit because it's a new bike the rear brake tends to well squeal for some reason or honk it goes very weird every now and then okay let's go another thing i can't say i'm i'm very much in love with is this what's the matter with this key where's the rest of it yeah kawasaki now this might have been a bad idea Come on, turn on. Ah, here we go. <laughs> I bet you weren't expecting this. But yeah, this key, it's very tiny. Okay, it looks good. It, it looks different. Doesn't look good. It actually looks horrible. But yeah, it is different. It's not a bulky key to carry around in your pocket. However, Kawasaki, it's a bike. We wear these. You know what these are? Gloves. You know what these do? These reduce the feel. You know how hard it is to fish for that freaking key inside a pocket? It's impossible! No more of this, please. Also, you have this stupid button like you guys like to do, like Honda and Yamaha likes to do, and like, v and like the V-Storm finally has gotten rid of. Stop this. Do that V-Storm system, which is way, way better, okay? But I'm nitpicking, okay? I don't like this windscreen because it's it sits right smack dab in my viewpoint so i keep getting a lot of distortion every time my head bobs up and down which is unbelievably annoying i would not get this windscreen i would get something just slightly shorter like this high the wind protection is awesome but i would live with a bit more wind on the helmet and windscreen but this high uh, this i would not suggest honestly I, either you're shorter than me or you're taller than me but at my height 1.74 meters this is awful 
Hey, I can actually adjust this one. Let's try adjusting it. Let's see if it gets worse or better. Because this windscreen is adjustable. Wanna see? Oh, this guy's pissing. <laughs> that guy was pissing off the side of the car. <laughs> there you go. Don't piss in public, you idiot. Let's go. Yes, now it's on its taller position. This is a stupid system, Kawasaki, by the way. At least put the knobs on the inside so we can do it without having to get off the bloody bike. Okay, um... It's worse. <laughs> it's just so tall! This is just so ridiculously tall. Seriously, Ramimoto, no, 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 <laughs> no, okay? <laughs> bad idea. <laughs> this is a bad idea. This is kind of ridiculous, honestly. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, that's the stuff I don't quite like about this bike. Well, that key is stupid. I would prefer this be better, but it is what it is. And this windscreen, it is an option. I think it's by Kappa. What's, what's the brand of this windscreen? It's something, I don't know. N not that tall. <laughs> not that tall, most definitely. Okay? Because this is just ridiculous. Jesus, I feel like I'm going to need a windscreen wiper. Actually, when I rode in the rain, I actually felt I needed a windscreen wiper, that or rain axe, because I couldn't see anything. I had to peek over it like this. <laughs> but, but yeah, okay, yeah, whatever. Apart from these stupid nitpicks, it is a lovely, lovely, great bike. I just wish to make it the perfect bike, this would need the tracer engine. And that would just about be it. It's a great in-between. Who would buy this bike? Well, it's again, just like the V-Storm 1000, it's the three bear story. The guy would ride the Tracer 650, uh, the Tracer 700 and he would go, nah, this is too much. This is just way too much. Would go on onto the V-Storm and say, nah, this is too off-roady. Would go onto this one go, just perfect. It's for the guys who want to do roads but also want to do some occasional off-road. The, the, the V-Storm is more for the guy who wants to do both all the time. I want to do road and off-road. I don't care what the road is. I want to do both. Okay, V-Storm. I want to do road, but if, if off-road comes, I'll do it. This one. I just want to do road, but if there's off-road, so I'll just live with it and I'll make that sacrifice and I'll just do it until it's done but I hope I get back on pavement quickly that's the tracer and that is this bike lovely and I did not expect to enjoy it this much I was actually a bit scared because I thought mm, I didn't like that much the last one it was a nice bike but it didn't actually excite me for some reason and I really like the guys at Ramimoto they're awesome and I I really didn't want to go and say, yeah, this is the worst of the three, guys. Sorry. And it's not. It's not the worst of the three. It's... They're all three bikes. It is amazing how balanced they are. They aren't just basically the same. They have their advantages and disadvantages. And this makes me sad because now I'll go back onto my tracer and I'll keep thinking, I don't have the V-Storm suspension for off-road or the Kawasaki suspension for on-road, but I do have this engine. And then I'll just go, I really like that suspension, which I can't have. <laughs> oh, and these are road tires, okay? Again, you can convert easily the Kawasaki onto V-Storm and the V-Storm onto Kawasaki by changing tires and suspension settings. So you can switch them around a little bit, I think, I hope. But yeah, it's. I was concerned this was the poor, the poor cousin of the three. But no, they're all basically very much the same. It's just different. It's literally just different focuses on each. Yamaha did a hooligan machine dressed up as an adventure bike. Suzuki made an off-road machine dressed up as an adventure bike. And Kawasaki did an adventure bike, dressed up as an adventure bike. But a versatile do-it-all that can do both pretty well. Or can adapt itself to both pretty well. It's 
well done Kaui, very well done Kaui, I'm, uh, I'm a bit confused as to why I don't see more of these on the road, to be honest, I really like it, I like it quite a lot, and it's got dual headlamps and all, hmm. weird, well that's it, the great, 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 and I'm honestly telling you this, really honestly telling you this, this is a very, very good bike, the Kawasaki Versus Shik 50. 2018 I'd really like to know what they improved on this bike because this feels nothing like the old one Cage your